My name is Jeffrey Chapman. I'm a cultural advisor at the Science Museum of Minnesota. Uh, this is Specimen Spotlight, and today we're talking about traditional Native American cording flutes. Every tribe has a story about where the flute came from. Some of the Ojibwe stories and some of the Dakota stories vary from place to place. My favorite one is the one where a young man, he's going off the forest, you know, he's going to go off the forest and die because he's so sad. And he's sitting by an old cedar tree. And he heard this voice that said, you know, why are you sad? And he looked around and there was nobody there. Uh, and he heard the voice, why are you sad? And he looked around and he looked up and there was a woodpecker above him kind of looking down at him. Uh, he told him the story about how he was sad, and you know, the girl didn't love him, but he loved her. And so the woodpecker said, I'm going to help you. So he said, no, listen when the wind blows. So when the wind started blowing, the woodpecker was sitting on this old hollow cedar branch sticking out the side of the tree. So he started moving from spot to spot, and there were holes in the top that he had pecked. And as he went from place to place, it started making noise. And he said, listen to this. He said, look at this very carefully. Look at this branch. Look at the holes. Measure it with your hand. How long is it? Where are the holes at? And go off and make one like this. Get a piece of cedar and make one like this, and I'll tell you how to, how to play it. And so over a period of days, the young man did that. He took his newly created flute, learned a song from the woodpecker, uh, went to the edge of the village, and that night he played the song, and the young lady he was in love with came out. And of course, all the other young ladies came out. But that's one of many stories. There's lots of different stories. So a woodpecker ever approaches you. But it's, a, it's something that, depending on the tribe you're from, is used purely for one specific purpose among Ojibwe traditions and many other Western Plains tribes. It's strictly a courting instrument. So uh, you know, one way to get a young lady's attention was to make a flute, either create a song or borrow a song or, create, or have a song that's traditionally used for that purpose and play it for her. I don't know who came up with it, been around a long time. Uh, many, many, many tribes use them. The Ojibwe traditional ways of making them, unlike in other parts of the country where they can use things like river cane or sort of solid pieces, uh, is to make them out of two pieces. You make them out of two pieces of cedar or sumac or, I mean, you can, always, you can make a flute out of almost any kind of wood, but uh, you cut it in two pieces, you split it full length. Uh, it has to be hollowed out on both sides. One of the unique things about these flutes is this thing on the back, which sits on top of a spacer of some sort. When I make them, I use birch bark. Some people use like brass or they use lead or whatever they happen to have uh, that allows the air to go forward. Uh, a lot of traditional Ojibwe ones, they call this a saddle because they were very tall in the back and very tall in the front like native made saddles were with very tall fronts and backs for women's saddles and men's saddles. Uh, I've seen all sorts of different ones in traditional flutes. I mean, some really weird ones, but uh, yeah, it, it can be anything, or it could just be a square block. And as for the head, again, the heads can be lots of things. Um, birds are the most common. Uh, uh, contemporary ones can have any number of weird things on the end. Uh, and again, it's, it's, it all depends on the tradition, and it also depends on the maker. These things are maker-made. They're not tribally made. They're maker-made. Makers determine what it's going to be. Uh, and as long as there's no particular you know, prohibition in a particular tribe about a certain image, that's what they do. They make it for themselves. <laughs> 